This right here is a CPU. And every CPU out there has a certain instruction set, which you'll be able to find on the spec sheet. But what exactly is an instruction set? Let's find out. OK, so a CPU is obviously a device that processes information, data. But the data is not the only thing that goes into the CPU. For example, if I want my little Pentium 4 processor here to add up some numbers for me, I'm not just going to give it the data. I'm not just going to give it some numbers. I also need to give it an instruction that tells it to add up those numbers for me. So instructions are also very important because then the CPU knows what to do. These instructions are simply a bunch of zeros and ones, some machine code that the CPU can understand. But here's the twist. This machine code is not the same on every CPU. For example, the add instruction might be this on one CPU, and it could be this on some other CPU. And on top of that, not all CPUs support the same variety of instructions. For example, a calculator CPU supports very little instructions, only the ones necessary for operating a calculator, whereas the Pentium 4 that I have here supports a whole crapload of instructions because it needs to run in a desktop computer system. Now, the overall bunch of instructions that a given CPU supports is what we call the instruction set of the CPU. It's kind of like the language that a CPU speaks. Then there are also two different types of instruction sets, two categories in which we can divide them. First of all, there is CISC, Complex Instruction Set Computing. A CISC instruction set is an instruction set that contains as many instructions as possible, and it's very, very complicated. The advantage of this is that there is an instruction for almost any operation that you can possibly think of, which means that very complex things can be performed on this CPU using very little instructions, because one instruction can contain many different things. The disadvantage of CISC is that you need a very complicated CPU design, which means you need more transistors, which means this CPU will consume more power. And when you're dealing with simple workloads, such as browsing the web or reading your email, you're not going to be able to utilize the complex operations advantage. So basically, this CPU is not very efficient when dealing with small workloads. Then there is also the RISC type instruction set. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing, and it means that you try to minimize the amount of instructions that the CPU can understand. So you only have a very basic set of instructions. The advantage of this is that you can have a very simple CPU design, which needs fewer transistors, which means it's going to use less power, which means great efficiency when performing basic operations. The problem is that if you are going to try to perform very complicated things on this kind of CPU, you'll need to use many instructions because it only supports basic ones. Now, the CISC CPUs are often used in desktop systems, laptops, larger systems, whereas RISC CPUs are excellent for mobile devices because those need to be very power efficient and because they run off a battery, of course. Now let's take a look at some of the instruction sets that you might be familiar with. First of all, there is x86, a CISC instruction set made by Intel, and they've been using that instruction set on all of their CPUs for a very long time. So the shiny new Core i7-8700K speaks the same language as the old Pentium 4 that I have right here. Now Intel really doesn't want any other company to make x86 CPUs, and they have been quite good at preventing this, because they are now the only company that is legally allowed to make x86 CPUs, along with AMD. If you want to know the history on why AMD got a license to make x86 CPUs, go find it. It's rather interesting, actually. Now, another instruction set that you're probably familiar with is called ARM, or ARM. 
and this is a RISC instruction set that was developed during the same era as x86, and it didn't really become that popular at first, until in the 2000s, mobile devices became a thing, and people needed RISC CPUs because those were more energy efficient. And suddenly, ARM became tremendously popular, and all kinds of companies started making products with ARM-based CPUs in them. Now, ARM is very interesting. The legal rights to make ARM CPUs are now in the hands of a company called ARM Holdings. But ARM Holdings doesn't make CPUs themselves. Instead, they sell licenses to make ARM CPUs to many other companies like Qualcomm, Apple, Samsung, and so on. All of those companies that make smartphone CPUs, basically. So ARM has a different strategy than Intel. Intel keeps its x86 architecture for themselves, and AMD, of course, and they produce their own CPUs, whereas ARM sells its rights to other companies who can then make their own designs based on the ARM instruction set. Anyway, now you know what an instruction set is. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.